and burst all your bubbles. You never thought that I'd get me a hoe. And then I pull the hoe up in front of me with the other way, the other hand. And then I, then I elbow you, and then you go, then we'll both start singing, look at the camera. Where, oh, where are you doing? How are you tonight? <laughs> Good one. Uh, we're live, eh? Oh, okay. Just now? Okay. Hey, everybody, welcome. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Sunday Night with Bev and our little brother Jane All Zero. Guten Abend. Guten Abend. I hope everybody has had a wonderful Easter weekend. It means different things to a lot of different people, but one thing it does mean is rebirth for all of us. Because when spring comes in, by God, we all rise to the occasion. No. It's especially after a winter like this one, eh? Yeah. It means, uh, to a lot of people, it means planting season. Uh, not yet. I have oh, I have a question actually. Somebody emailed me a question because they weren't going to be able to make it tonight, but they'll watch it tomorrow. And she said that she it's from Laura C. And she said now you're south of her and I'm north of her, but or but pretty close. She's uh, New York State, Western New York State. New York City. What's that? What was that commercial? Uh, Ace Picotti, that's yeah. it. New York City. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you plant by the rules? In other words, uh, wait for the last frost, or do we push it? And my answer is, I have been known to push it. I mean, one year I planted my squash out in tire planters, and then I put, uh, I turned um, tomato cages upside down over them, and then wrapped the tomato cages in frost blanket so that they could have an extra start. But um, only if I had a greenhouse, like a temporary greenhouse, would I actually push it because here we've been known to get snow in May. So well, I wait until the 24th of May. If she goes to the casinos, if she goes to the casinos and she's a bit of a gambler, it's a kind of an early planting is a gamble. Sometimes you win big, yeah. and sometimes you fail miserably and you got to start from scratch. I had to... I lost almost all my seedlings that I started inside, and and uh, I like you. I was like, it's too late to start over. And my brother John said, no, it's not, because if you know you can start it, and if your season runs short, then just you'll find a way to fix it. And I said, okay. Yeah. Well, so I'm well, already thinking of a. I'm already thinking of a um of a, a small greenhouse for my cabbages and tomatoes. To give them an extended growing season. Yeah, it's uh, it's hard to know. I mean, there's never. I mean, this 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 winter and this spring, our weathermen, even on the TV, weather guys are like, I don't know what's going on. Because <laughs> one day it was like 85, and the next morning we woke up and it was snowing, and I'm like, really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's just, not you know, so bad. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad <laughs> if we didn't have such, you know, because normally. We're used to getting snow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I have people talking on here. What do you mean? On the comment tracker. For, you know what? This is the first time I have not turned the comment tracker on and it's friggin' working. May I got it backwards. I don't even know what that is. I don't I know. Aunt Duddy wants to know how's Duddy the goat? Um she's a vision of loveliness and I think she has either mass, uh, uh, beginnings of mastitis or she's weaning her kids because I went to pull on her teats and to see if I could get some milk and they felt rather solid rather than like an, a water filled balloon type was what they would normally feel like and so I'm wait, I'm still waiting for the vet to call me back on that one and Reef, Reef Tanker says good evening everyone Dallas Red, hi Dallas Red, happy Easter, and Ginny Piflom says Reef happy Reef Easter Perry. from New North Illinois. That's cool. If you guys have figured out how this comment tracker works, just keep putting in there. And That's of course, right. we have Mary off camera, who never, we never see. Well, Reef Tanker is Mary. Oh, for God's sake! That's <laughs> why you were grinning. <laughs> yeah, that's Hang her. on a second. That's her name. Oh, oh me. <laughs> Bam, help me. <laughs> Yours is, mine is. 
I got to get a new hat. Would you believe I got this free hat from the feed store, right? And it's only I've only had it for like, I don't know, seven years. And it's already falling apart. That is an impressive uh, carpet uh, you got on top of your head under that hat you're hiding. <laughs> you like that? Oh. That's really thick looking. Oh, oh. oh. if I run it too hard, then I can't do math anymore, so I got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, there you go. Oh, you are burnt, eh? Yeah. I got a summer on top of my head because I had my hat off yesterday. Now, let's let's have a look at your oven behind you. I know you've probably done a video on it, but I'd like to yeah. see it anyway. I did a video on it. Can you see it? That's beautiful. Now, you said that's bricked in all the way around. All the way around and across the top and around the side. And then I slide my rocket stove, my little silver fire survivor stove, into the uh, into where am I at here? Yeah, I see it. And then uh, we make fire. I was originally I was going to put this on top of my heat exchanger box. Right. And then we would just build a fire in the barrel, and it would heat up the oven. And I got to thinking, I'm like, why make big fire when I can make little fire? You know, what I had to build a great big barrel fire if I can get away exactly. from that. And you could use that all summer long. Yep. Well, he, we can't. Well, our kid ain't got nothing on old Ohio hillbilly <laughs> haven there. Holy well, I mean, Christ! I got to build me them. You just never know until you try something. You never know if it's going to work until you try it. And yeah. uh, we had visitors this past weekend. AJ Prepper and Hillbillies in the Bush came down for a visit, and I looked. You know, I looked at the stove, and I was like, "Next thing you know, me and me and Hillbillies, we was tearing this thing apart, trying to figure out how it come apart." We got it apart. We set it on top of the rocket stove, and in about thirty minutes, it was at four hundred twenty-five degrees. How are you going? How are you going to adjust the temperature? The fire. Is it going to be one of those things? Oh yeah, the fire, right? Duh. <laughs> take out less sticks or put in more sticks. It's just uh, you see, more sticks equals bigger fire equals more heat. At least, <laughs> at least down here in the state, see. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Way down there in Canada land. Oh, come on. <laughs> Give me a break. I'm telling you, I got, it's been one of the, actually, it's been a really busy weekend. Howie's almost finished the battery box. He's got all the batteries in it, but he's still got a part of it, like most of it is under our porch, but some of it where the window is, where he's going to uh, vent out through the, ba the basement is under the deck. The window part's under the deck. So he's got actually got to build a little roof under the deck to so no water will get down. But he's done that and he's been playing with sap all day, boiling that down and that little two burner propane stove now I bought he that I got at the second hand shop. He's got that set up in the porch and he's doing the final boil down on the sap and cool. he's having a wonderful time because I'm not there to tell him what to do. <laughs> He's just wandering around doing his thing and yep, feeding yep. animals and watering animals and all that funny fun stuff. We got up this morning and raked up some rows in the garden and uh, we was going to try to get the plant, but we just got busy with other stuff. Mary had to run some rabbits into town to sell them because it's Easter. Everybody wants damn Easter money. Well, and, that's good. Uh, yeah, those the, the mini rexes. We're not selling. We won't sell the meat rabbits because well, we eat them. Well, they're meat. That's they're, why. They're meat. And they're not nothing pretty to look at anyway. You know, most of them sit around and they're like, <laughs> Feed me. Feed me more. Yeah. Feed me. Feed me more. Oh, that, yeah, we're just dealing with the garden. And we we, we uh, moved the chicky pen. Remember where we moved it over to the garden? Yeah. And they got that thing scratched down to just bare dirt. So we moved the chicky pen back where we had it. And uh, we tilled up uh, that lower garden and going to plant beans and stuff down there. And, just that time of year, busy, busy, busy. Planted some raspberries and uh, propped up the blackberries and just all kinds of stuff going on. Getting ready to getting ready to put all this stuff in the ground. Wow! Well, let, let Mother Nature take over once you get them in the ground. The tarp is now visible on my garden. That that four foot of snow melted pretty quick, especially when the black tarp started showing through. Yeah. It'd pick up a little bit of sunshine, and by God, it just melted right off. But we're leaving it on to kind of cook the soil because every fall, the, the barn throw off because we empty the barn out in the fall and we empty it out in the spring. 
and in the fall, all that goes on the garden and then gets raked over and, and the tarp goes down to cook it, so to speak. So yeah. I'm actually hiring my eldest son to come up for two weeks at the end of May, for the last two weeks of May, because he's a student and he needs a summer job. And if I want to see him, i got to pay him. So he's... Uh, He's coming up, and I'm going to pay his rent for a month, and for two weeks I get to, I get to boss him around for eight hours a day. Like the good old days. Just like the uh, stuff that I got to pay for it, but I'm going to get as much pleasure out of my money as I can. Yeah, there you go. But he's going to be tilling the garden. He's going to be digging the garden. He's going to be, uh, you know, cleaning the barn. Hell, if I if I run out outdoor run out of outdoor stuff for him to do, he'll be washing floors because that's one thing I can't do. Well, I can, but I mean, it takes me all day just to sweep and wash the floors right. all day, and then my back's wrecked for like three days. So normally, how he does it like twice a month, you know, if I keep it swept up and tidy, he'll he'll give it a good scrub down twice a month. So yeah. I just have to damp mop it. I'm hoping to be, uh, once we get these gardens planted and get uh, as much stuff in the dirt as we can, I'm going to start uh, working on a hog lot. Well, we got, I got to build a pheasant run first. Right. We got pheasants coming in next month. And then uh, I'm going to start building a hog lot. I mean, the prices of meat down here are just ridiculous, man. They They're have going nuts here too. Two it's people cocoa puffs. And, uh, we're not going to be able to afford it. I mean, I, there's a lot of people who are vegetarians, and that's fine and dandy, but I like I like meat. Um, and I want to grow. I grow my own if I have to. If I can't afford it, so. Well, if people are, if there's, I, I, I'm not being disrespectful, but if there's vegetarians out there, who are vegetarians because they don't want to, you know, they got something against eating animals. If you're a vegetarian, why are you eating all the animals' food? Then you're probably going to starve. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I mean, they, like you said, I'm not to each his own. If they don't want to eat meat, then so be it. But uh, I like to eat meat, and my family likes meat. And uh, it's getting really, really pricey. So uh, we're just going to try to get a couple of pigs and raise them up, butcher them in the fall, because I do love bacon. Well, it's a good thing those goats are too old, and you made a promise, because they'd be some tasty. <laughs> oh, yeah. But East plus Northwoods. Uh, uh, East plus Northwood Turner. Uh, says he's got bunnies that are due tonight. Anything I should be doing or looking for? Um, the only thing that I would say is, uh, you know, if your if your doe has started pulling all the fur from underneath her chin to make a nest, you know, put a box in there for her to, to nest the box in. And if you've done all that, then there's not a whole lot you can do. Just uh, you know, let nature take its course and let her do her thing. Um, I, I mean, you can sit there and watch, and if she has any complications, try to help. But I don't really know anything about it. I just let my rabbits, let Mother Nature do what Mother Nature does, and uh, and uh, go, just let it take its course. And that's that would be my advice. That's what we do with our rabbits. Uh oh, what am I doing here? Okay, sweet little farming wants to know: Did I put any eggs in the new old incubator yet? And what kind of eggs do you plan on putting in it, honey? They're already in there. Um, I got a video, I've got seven duck eggs in there and six turkey eggs. And everybody who told us that male tom turkeys aren't fertile before two, not the case. My good, I don't know if it was my singing or my telling him how good looking he was, but he has done his job. And whether or not they hatch is another thing altogether because they are immature birds. But yes. Um, the that incubator, uh, my my regular incubator here, it's got chicken eggs in it, and the old one I don't know if you can see it back there, that has the duck eggs and the turkey eggs. And as a matter of fact, my chicken eggs are supposed to hatch this week. Yeah. So. Yeah, all you turkey haters out there. <laughs> turkey eggs, they're stupid. That's stupid. You can't have turkey eggs till the second year. That's stupid. Well, that was kind of yeah. That was kind of. Hang on, let me do. <laughs> do we look related now? Oh, what is that? Is that that's so cute? That looks like a fist, only cuter. Oh, shut up! <laughs> it's so little and cute. Look at that little fist. What, my fist? <laughs> I got a, I got a word to the wise, buddy. You see that fist? <laughs> that wears a size eleven wedding ring. Totally not intimidated. I'm just saying. Supposed to be, you're my little brother. Actually. <laughs> 
Yeah, I don't want to see that. Mine's a little screwed up. I wouldn't want to walk into that in a dark alley. <laughs> but, oh, someone else, Jay Knoll is wearing a sleeveless shirt. He's in Ohio, and I'm freezing in Virginia. Go figure. That was Lynn Dutt. <laughs> um, I can't get these to scroll down, though. How do I get these to scroll down? I don't the know. Comment as soon as Mary gets back, I'm sure she'll catch us up on the comments and the questions. She's in Virginia, and she's cold. I wonder why that is. It was like 80-something here today on my side of the hills. Come on over to it's, Canada. It's because she's living on the wrong side of the hills. That's what it is. She needs to move on to this side of the Appalachians. This is where all is happening over here on my side. Yeah, see, see, we live, on, we live on the other side of, uh, we live on the other side of the Gatineau Hills. And uh, colder than the other side. Yeah. So, but, <laughs> you know, it's all good. It's all good. I can, you know what, folks? I'm having trouble seeing all these comments, and I can't get them to roll up. How do I do this? Uh oh, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> Holy smokes! You clicked on something. So anyway, huh? I said you clicked on something because your screen, your screen just went all white. I know, I know. Hang on a second. Well, I can still see you. All I'm right. The light coming off of your computer. Uh oh, I just shut off the comment tracker, I think. Oh, man. I'm, so I don't know what I did. So far, anyway, we're caught up. Mary says what? Mary says we're caught up on the questions and stuff for now. Awesome. Awesome. I mean, it is I made bread today. It is Easter Sunday huh? evening. I said it is Easter Sunday evening. There may not be a whole lot of people, you know, on YouTube right now. Yeah, we only we're down to about we got thirty four viewers, which is about half of what we normally have. Ah, uh, thirty four. I made bread. Who are you waving to? Uh the thirty four people that are watching. Look at my hand, man. I am dirty. Oh, now put your hands down. We're down to thirty one. Ah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, I take my shirt off. Uh, no, I mean no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay, now we're at minus we gotta make up viewers for next week show because we're like in the negative 11 viewers now oh well we're back up to 33 so you must have said something right <laughs> so what are you planning this year like how oh. much space do you actually have roughly in square feet for garden I don't have any idea me you either know, we got a, you know a garden over there and we got a garden over there and we're gonna put a garden up on top of the hill and then mm -hmm. a garden over by the creek, just wherever we got a flat spot, we're planting stuff in. So I don't know what the square footage would be, uh, but we're planting uh, tomatoes and peppers and potatoes. We'll grow some carrots. We're going to grow green beans. We're going to grow summer squash and winter squash, and the pumpkins are included in that. And we'll grow. got to grow some cantaloupe. I love cantaloupes. Uh, but, you know, we, we're pretty basic, right? I don't get any, uh, of course, we're in our little A-frame thing that I built. Mm -hmm. We got, uh, excuse me, we got uh, lettuce and strawberries and some herbs. Howie wants to dig up my, you know my raised strawberry bed he built me? He wants to dig it up. <laughs> I, well, I you like don't have that space or something? Two years running now. I find after two years, I finally got my strawberries so that they fill half the bed. And this year, come June, I'll be able to put the runners, like the other half of the the, the strawberry bed's got garlic in it. Come June, when I pull up that garlic, then I'll be able to spread the strawberries out. He wants to dig it up. I said, "What the hell are you talking about?" He said, "Oh, I've got to put footing proper footings under the porch." I said, "Well." Why didn't you tell me that? He said, I did. I said, no, you didn't. <laughs> but, you know, I, I just walked away because I didn't want to digress into a, yes, I did. No, you didn't. You know, match. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're yeah. up to 40. Well, strawberries are pretty hardy. I mean, you could probably, he could probably dig them up and set them aside and then do what he's got to do and then put them back. True. True. So they're, they're pretty... I mean, I've spent two summers, you know, yeah. fortifying well, little... that soil. That's what I would do if it were me. But then again, if, if he was me, then I'd be him, and he would just use my body to dig up. And, you know, so. I'm, I'm scared. 
<laughs> that's what I would do anyway. I would just dig them up and set them aside in a bucket or something and keep them moist, and then whenever you're done with the footers, then put them right back in. Yeah, I never thought of – I'll just put a couple of big gold flower pots out, some of my big ones, and mm -hmm. and uh, set them in that. You got uh, a question? Yep. Judy Homesteader, how do you cook wild turkey? Happy Easter to you both. Well, happy Easter to you too, Judy. Same uh, way you cook regular turkey. Yeah, I, that's how I cook mine. Yeah, just like I roast them, just like I would a regular turkey. They're usually not as thick-breasted uh, as the uh, as you know, like a store-bought turkey or something are. So they usually they cook a little quicker. That's the store-bought turkeys are genetically modified. They are genetically modified to be double-breasted. Yeah. So if you want wild turkey, or if you want good turkey, you want wilder heritage. I recommend brining them for uh, overnight. That's what I do too. I cook my turkeys differently too. Even like if you get one, if I get one from the store, I cook them differently than a lot of people do. I'll, I'll like you say, I'll soak them in salt water overnight, and in the morning I'll put my oven on 300, uh, 350, and I start my turkeys with the breast down, and yeah. the back up, and, and then flip it over because all so all the juice will go into the breast. Well, a couple of reasons. I started with the back up, and that's for 30 minutes, and then I flip it onto one side. And I let it cook for 15 minutes on one side, and I flip it to the other side with the wing up, and cook it for 15 minutes, and then I just cook it for about an hour, hour and a half with the breast up. That just makes sure all the heat gets distributed to all the different areas of the bird, and it cooks it a lot quicker. And that way, you don't have your breast up underneath that that top element of the oven for you know two and a half or three hours just drying it out. Okay. If you rotate it all around, then the heat is distributed at different areas. More evenly. More yeah, evenly. More right. evenly, and it, and it cooks it, it. I have found that it cooks it a lot better, and the bird comes out a lot juicier. And I do not stuff my birds either. Why? Because the longer, the more you stuff it, the more stuff that's inside that bird, the longer it's got to be under the heat to get it heated all the way through. And the longer that bird's under the heat, the drier it's going to be. Okay, so do you make, like, you're stuffing in the oven on the side? Hang on a second. Mindy, shut up. Oh, I guess I just got told. <laughs> Minnie, come here. Um, come here. Come here. Come here. That's what I've always uh, been taught, and that's what I've always heard anyway. The longer that any kind of poultry birds are under the heat, under the gun, so to speak, then the drier they're going to be. Oh, my God. Um... I uh, I actually do a pan if my son's going to be here. My one son, say hi, Minnie. My little my uh, I do a pan of stuffing on the side for the last half hour in the oven, and I just put turkey drippings on it and put the foil over top and. Yeah. Bad. You be bad. Wash your face. Show everyone how you wash your face. The camera shine now. She usually goes like this, with her paw. Go. Anyway, sorry. I digress. I'm really tired. I've been front. I've been in front of this babble box all day doing editing and answering questions and stuff. I have. Not, I feel. I don't feel like I've done a whole lot today, but I feel really tired for some reason. Like I have done a whole lot today. I don't know. I mean, I've just done more than what I thought I've done. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Who's who else is this? What was that? I got another question here. Okay. Life and love. Addicted to life and love? Are strawberries cross-pollinated, or are they GMO? No, there's no GMO strawberries yet. I don't know that. I know that mine, I have some that I know are hybrids uh, because they're ever-bearing. Yeah. Um, and then most of mine are June-bearing. Those are the ones that I'm going to be getting for, from now on, just the early spring or the early summer June-bearing berries. Because then you get your bunch of strawberries all at once, and then the rest of the time they're putting on runner plants, which, you know, the runners, they put out a little vine off of the side of the plant that makes another plant. So you can keep trolling little plants and just fill up your whole berry patch, which is exactly what we're going to be doing with ours. Because we got some of these plants behind us that are just, I mean, they are just covered in flowers. Awesome. So hopefully we're going to be, you know, doing the old strawberries jam dance here in June. I still got strawberry jam from two years ago. Well, then you just don't eat enough jam. No, we don't. I, I mean, people assume just because I'm, I'm like, you know, have a armchair of fat strapped to my ass <laughs> that, that I eat a lot of unhealthy stuff and I just don't. I don't eat a well, lot of anything. But well, you don't have 37 kids running around like I do right here too. So. Not anymore. No, 
But, I mean, I only have two kids, but when they show up, they bring all their friends. <laughs> so, you know, it's usually a barbecue <laughs> happening. But as far, anybody who wants to know, as far as I know, when I last checked, the only thing that is actually genetically, they use other plants and other, other uh, genomes to modify what they modify, but on the market, the only things so far that are genetically modified is feed corn, um, soya bean, and what's the other one? Oh. Those are the two main ones. Wheat is not actually genetically modified. It's not on the market yet. So the more we put pressure on them not to genetically modify stuff, the better. Yeah. Montana. Yeah. Uh, Mouse Toes wants to know, was the wall on your property when you moved there? I assume she means my wall. Um, yes. When we got when the property started to get... The, this property, um, back in the early 19-teens and 20s and 30s, was a big, huge green bean patch because it was a, a semi-level spot on the side of this hill that we live on. Um, so, like Ma Keeney, you hear me talk about her. She lived up on the ridge for a long time. She was 107. She remembers that she would come down here and they would pick green beans off of this, this semi-flat hill here. And then, uh, whenever they went to do the dirt work to put the house on, they cut the hillside, this hill right here a little bit, so that they could put the house here. And then they, they built that wall. Out of it. Yeah, they built that wall at the same time. They built the wall, then they put the house on. So, yeah, it's been here. And I'm the only person that's ever lived here. Uh, as far as the house goes. So, yep, the wall was first, and then the house was segundo, so that the hill doesn't slide down into the house. That's the purpose yeah, of a retaining, retaining wall. wall. Yeah. And it just happened to work out. I had no idea that it was going to work out so beautifully for a strawberry patch and an outdoor kitchen and so on and so on. Where we put it up, it was just another, it was a pain in the ass. Actually, I hated it because you got it trimmed on the top of it, and, and you know, and it was just like I hated it. And now I'm like, thank you, Jesus, for this retaining wall, man. This is so awesome. Well, I mean, and you've, you know, for the amount of space it, it actually takes up, you've done an amazing job with like potato boxes and strawberry plants and your outdoor kitchen and everything. It's just really well, a great the job. Shack, the smoke shack is at the very end of the other wall that way. Yeah. The smoke shack yeah. here, and then the potato box is right next to that, and then we got this one little berry patch right here where the solar oven is, and then the outdoor kitchen, and then the rest of the wall that way is a uh, is another big old strawberry patch. So yeah, the wall it serves many many purposes now instead of just retaining. You should do some of your strawberries. Uh, did you see my apple crisp today? I did. It you should pretty, you should do tasty. some of your strawberries in almost like a pie filling. Like, you know, with thickener, less sugar so that it's not gelled, gelled like jam. Yeah. And so that you can, because strawberry rhubarb apple, or strawberry rhubarb crisp is just, I'm not, I hate rhubarb, but you put that in some strawberries for, um, with the apple crisp, like an apple crisp. Oh my goodness, you just slather the cream on that. You know what's really, really good? What? Strawberry soda. How do you make strawberry soda? I can't I have know. soda. I thought you knew. No. It's just a little bit of soda water. With some, you take your strawberries and put them in your food processor, grind them up into juice, you know, Yeah. Taste and add it to your soda water and a little bit of sugar to taste. And boop. My mother-in-law got me one of them magic bullet things for Christmas. That would yeah. probably work. It would. I, I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. I got I, I'm overflowing with gadgets, man. I can't. I'm so tired of gadgets. <laughs> uh, let's see. Shalimar perfume. How you doing? I hope you get that flower thing figured out because I know if you took everything that I know about flowers and added it to a cup of hot water, you would have a nice big cup of Jack Squat. What so, are we talking about? The poisonous flowers for animals? Well, she asked me a question on my, one of my gardening videos about she has a flower that she didn't know what she could put it outside and what. And I don't know crap about flowers, so I, <laughs> I said I, I, I told her exactly that. I don't know crap about flowers. Sorry, I wish I could help, but I don't know. Um, she she posted something earlier today that Easter lilies are poisonous for That's cats. Yeah, a lily. 
Thanks. And and yes, you can put those outside. You can put them outside. Um, once the danger of frost is passed, you can plant them. Uh, as far as animals, be, you know, plants being deadly to animals. Okay, I gotta say this, folks. Someone once said, "Oh, don't plant fo foxglove. That's poisonous." Well, folks, most plants are either food poison or medicine or poison medicine because most even most poisons have medicinal properties so I'm just gonna trust my dogs not to eat the flowers yeah, I mean, yeah. animals are not stupid is I mean they okay the turkey is the domesticated turkey is the stupidest animal on the face of the earth but you gotta trust your aunt you know your animals to know what to eat and what not to eat children on the other hand Mm. Yeah. Well, if they eat it, they will learn a very valuable life lesson. That's right. Uh, anyway, she wants to know, what do you think about using a propane barbecue rotisserie? I say, Ooh. great. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. That sounds like it's yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, just because it uses propane, or you know, that that doesn't that doesn't mean anything. And I mean, I love rotisserie stuff. I mean, you can do. I know people do chickens and turkeys and stuff like that, rotisserie, but if you get like a half a pork loin, I have a challenge for you, Jay, I have a challenge for you. What's that? I want you to figure out a way of putting a rotisserie on your outdoor kitchen grill. Nope. Not going to do it. I don't know. I, give me a minute. I'll think of something. Okay, but not today. I just mean... Yeah. That's what it needs. It needs actually, a, a rotisserie. We have been thinking about that. I've been thinking about how to actually do that. And what I want to do, I want to get a little, uh, what I want to do is I want to get a little motor that I can hook up to a solar panel, and that way the solar panel is turning the motor, and it's just doing it. That way it spins rather than uh, me. Look for, go to the thrift store and look for an old turntable from uh, or an old record player. Maybe. Maybe that might work. I was thinking more along like a, maybe a fan motor, uh, something. But I had to re-gear it. Somehow. The fan motor, the fan motor may not have enough power. Turntables, well, maybe. All I know is the fans they make nowadays are garbage. Yeah. You're lucky if they last through the summer. Well, I've got one. I've got a fan in there from the '60s. The only thing I want to, you know, make sure it doesn't happen is it doesn't spin too fast. So I'll probably have to put the 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 one that's spinning and then put a bigger sprocket. You know, like a motorcycle. You, you know, you yeah, 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 exactly. And slow, and then uh, you know, figure out a way. Maybe my uncle Buck, cause he or uh, my buddy Greg, he's got a welder. We could weld a sprocket. You know uh, what would work really well? What is the uh, the metal uh, might work really well? Is the metal clothesline pulleys? Maybe it might. I was thinking of something just to have a solar panel connected to some sort of a motor with a little chain and yeah. a sprocket. With oh, oh I see what you mean. Like a, okay, like a bicycle, like a motorcycle bicycle chain. Yeah. Okay. It'll sit there and just turn, and as long as the sun's out, it'll just keep sitting there and turning. Mm -mm. It's something I got. I just had a vision of a whole pig on that, that freaking <laughs> <trail. laughs> Yeah. It's just uh, something that I got to get time to sit around and think about, and put a, get some sort of plan together, and then put the plan into action. And yeah. because when me and my me and you, know, me get some of my buddies out here, you know, hibbles in the bush, and Mr. Greg, and and uh, we get all three of us together, we probably got at least a whole brain between all three of us. So we. You guys got to do a road trip out this way. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Why? Uh, because I don't I don't travel. I can, Lupita can't travel. Oh yeah, okay. I'm sorry. I'm not traveling, and and I, you know what? The entire winter, I went to town three times all winter long. I got sick twice, so I'm not leaving the hill anymore. I'm done. I'll just stay out here where I belong. Well, God, that's where they. It's like going to the hospital, man. People are go there with infectious diseases. Yeah. Yep. But avoid at all. I don't. You know, I don't. I don't really like shopping anymore. I used to be a compulsive shopper, if you can believe it. And and I well I'm a, I'm an addictive personality period right which means for mo for people like me the fact that I can smoke marijuana I'm legal by the way I can smoke marijuana and it's not addictive at all for me you know I actually don't like smoking it but I sure like it at bedtime <laughs> my goodness 
you like it whenever you're hurting, and it makes the hurt. Oh, go away. the muscle relaxer kicks in. That's that's the best muscle relaxer. But <clears throat> I don't like shopping. I mean, to me, every time I go shopping, I just get angrier because I look at labels, and when I look at labels, and I, they're getting sneaky with labels, John. Yeah, they are. I noticed <clears throat> when I went shopping on Thursday. And when I go shopping, folks, let it be understood that I don't go shopping like most people go shopping for their weekly groceries. I go because I have money and something's on sale that I can stock up on because nine times out of ten, we're always outfitted. We're always outfitted for, you know, potatoes, meat, and I baked bread and stuff. Anyway, they're getting sneaky. I saw cheese slices, like a package of cheese slices, and I was just, as a joke, I was saying to my cousin Didi, oh, let's read the ingredients, right? But the first thing on the on the top, it said um, all natural flavors, no additive colors or whatever, right? The thing is, is they assume they automatic ninety percent of the population will look at that and go, oh, that must be better for you, and not read the back of the label, where all the real nasty crap is kept. Mm -hmm. So well, I just they, don't like shopping because it just pisses me off. They don't realize that the five pound bag of sugar is actually now a four pound bag of sugar. Well, yeah, I like the sugar. You know those those bags of organic sugar I bought, I don't know, a month ago, those 10-pound bags? I haven't even opened one yet. You know, I haven't even opened one yet. And I have a feeling when my son gets up here, one of them's going to disappear into his room. And then he'll secret it and take it home because he's <laughs> – my older son is the kind that will take, you know, vegetables and dip over chips and dip. And, well, Briar would live on Kraft Dinner and Pizza if you let him. Yeah, because that's just such healthy chow right there. Oh, on well, I, I yeah. you know, I mean, they're they're pinky in the brain for God's sake. <laughs> Who else is? Pinky in the brain. Sugar and spice. Sugar and spice wants to know: Do either of you like gooseberry pie? Bev, will you make a rhubarb pie vid? Oh my God. I dig gooseberries, man. We I use them. We use them in jam. We make a like a mixed berry jam. Uh, I got gooseberry. We got gooseberries in the freezer right now. In there, a couple of packs of gooseberries. Uh, I dig gooseberries. Why I, don't you make a rhubarb pie? I can't grow rhubarb here. I'm, I'm, I have a hard time getting rhubarb to grow. We're kind of a little far south for that. That's way up there where you're at to grow rhubarb, eh? Okay, I, I'm not fond of rhubarb. Uh, I'm really not. But when my mother-in-law comes. I will make a rhubarb pie because she loves the stuff. And then and you'll I'll, make a video. And I'll make a video of making a rhubarb pie just for my mother-in-law. All right. I, uh, well, I don't, I, don't do time, straight, I don't do just straight gooseberry pie. We add our gooseberries in with other, you know, like blueberries and, and strawberries and blackberries mm. and blackberries and all kind of other kind of berries that we added. We add it all together to make jam with uh, in, in jam. But, I mean, I bet you... Uh, straight huckleberry or a, what is it, a gooseberry pie would probably be pretty good. Okay, I got a question, John. How do you know a gooseberry's bloody ripe? It's green. Because they're juicy and like a berry that's ripe. They look exactly like a currant, only they're green and striped. When you squeeze them, juice comes out. Okay, John. Let this is this is a family this is a family viewing. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Um, no, You're, it's no different than any other berry. You're like you know, when you, you get a green berry, it feels real hard. You can't squeeze it. Nothing, you know. And whenever it gets okay. ripe, you can squeeze it, and you can tell that it's just ripe. And, and uh, I don't know. if it doesn't take like crap, then it's probably ready to go. I don't know where I'd even get my hands on gooseberries. Actually, like roses, they plant them around Quebec. Like around, say, the donut shops and the drive-throughs, they plant what, like a, a Ragosa rose, which has the nice big rose hips, mm -hmm. and they plant gooseberries around buildings as shrubbery. And it's like, you know, I never seem to be in the city when there those gooseberries are ripe. But yeah, I don't know when they would be ripe up there. Um, I'm assuming there wouldn't be too much longer after they're ripe down around our area, which would be. What, August, September? Probably. Late Probably. summer? All I know is strawberries are first, then raspberries, then blackberries. That's about all I know. Yeah. 
and huckleberries are a little bit right after blackberries. Now, do they grow on a tree? Uh, yeah, like a little shrubby bush type thing. I've never seen a huckleberry. Yeah. Well, you won't be able to say that if you come visit. If? After. Oh, okay. Of course I'm coming. One way or another. So I said after. You won't be able to say that after you come to visit. There's going to be a lot uh, of things you won't be able to say after you visit here. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to the entire Hill Folk experience. I'm going to find my corn cob pipe and bring that along with me. <laughs> Actually, there may be some residue in it that will get me stopped at the border. I got, I got, I got one down here. Where you know what? We got a cornfield right over there. We'll just make one real quick for you. You ever made one? They're, yeah, they're stupid easy to make. Really? Yeah. Do a video. <laughs> what? A snap of a corn cob in half, hollowing it out, getting a stick, and the yeah. The mowing plants. They got the hollow sticks that come up out of them. Just grab, cut one of them up, and shove it into the side, and there you go. Okay, you're gonna have to do a video on that because. <sighs> okay. Actually, you know what? Who should do one? Oh. Uh, Hillbilly's in the bush because he actually smokes a, a, a corn cob pipe. New Uncle Bob. Oh, Hillbilly's in the bush. He uh, he, I mean, he he'll smoke a cigarette every once in a while, but whenever he smokes a pipe, it's actually his corn cob pipe that he made. He just he man that dude it's all kind of when he needs something, he needs a spoon. He'll grab a stick and whittle one out real quick. That's amazing. actually the end of my pipe. I got another pipe that at the end of it, the plastic tip, they're always breaking yeah. and wearing out, and we just grab a just grab a stick and and hollow it out and whittle it down. And, Put it on there and keep on going. Oh my God! You know what? You're gonna have to show me that when I come down because if that's stupid easy to make, I want to make. Yeah, one. they're 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 really easy to make. I mean, that's why I carry the two knife. I got my big knife on my side, the three inch blade, and I got my little Whittler knife that I carry in my pocket. My pocket knife is a Whittler knife because if you're out, you know, if I'm out on the hill or I'm down by the garden or something, and the tip of my pipe breaks off, then I just grab a stick and hollow it out and whittle one down real quick and then keep going. And for all those folks who think I don't have a, you know, this is this is what I normally, I have a regular knife, but this is what I normally carry in my purse. And it's got the little scissors and it's got a can opener and blades and it's got a screwdriver on it and a corkscrew and all sorts of fun stuff. It's called a Swiss Navy knife. Oh. So it's got a few of the things that a Swiss Army knife has on it. But... What? A few, a few of the stuff that a regular Swiss Army knife has on it, but not as much as what the the Army knife has. It's even got it's even got this little, like, oh, what am I going to cut with a saw that size? Come <laughs> on! You would be surprised. You you'd be surprised what you could cut with that. Yeah, well, I guess I better put this back in my purse, eh? As long as it's sharp, you can cut it. Saws. It's because you got to huh. make small saw in motions instead of long saw in motions. It's still a saw. Right. Right. Cool. And so. Autumn Prepper. Hi, Autumn. Hi, Autumn. Good to see you. Well, I mean, good to see your comment, I guess. I, I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. I'll just answer the question. I see the Silver Fire Oven Cooker grew. <laughs> yeah. Big time. Uh, there will be a video out about that. But, uh, yeah, we did an experiment the other day, and it worked. So we got the big one now. We got a toaster oven and the, the big full-size regular standard kitchen oven now outside that all runs off of the uh that silver fire survivor rocket stove it's awesome how's your quail doing autumn give us a, a video update on that will ya that would she be did. cool mary said she had posted something on facebook she got somebody i guess i think somebody really pissed her off pretty good because she said she was done with all that stuff and she took a bunch of her videos down and i think uh -oh. somebody yeah, they're gonna find out real quick if they don't, if they're not careful. <laughs> they don't know who they're messing uh -oh. with. Autumn's tough. Well, yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to be on the on the bad end of her in a dark alley. Hey, hey, no. hey, I love you, Autumn. Me too. <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Hopefully, she'll do some videos. I hope so. I saw Grady put one up. I haven't had a chance to re uh, watch it yet. What are you drinking? Sun tea. Ooh, now, now, do you put tea bags in a glass jug or a glass jar with cold water and set it in the sun to steep? Yes. Thank you, because a lot of people like boil the water and 
that brings out too much of the tannic acid in the tea. You I wanted have, a more mild flavor, right? We just have a gallon pickle jar that we put, we fill it up with water, we throw in, we got, you know, like the big tea bags, either use one great big giant tea bag. Or like I've never seen a tea bag like that. When you put it in or, the pot when you were testing your little thing there, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. We use those, and then you see the sun over right behind me? Usually we just throw the whole jar, just take that pickle jar, just toss it right in there, and it only takes 20, 25, 30 minutes, and that tea's ready to go. Bring it out, sweeten it up, throw it over some ice, and bada-bing. Well, it's yeah, iced tea. tea i got to make me some. That's huge. That's awesome. That's a tea bag right there. No, honey, this is a tea bag. You guys are screwing around with them little bitty Canadian tea bags. Dude. We're not screwing around. Out here. <laughs> we make tea by the gallon. Bag. That's a What you have is, I don't know, some kind of monster tea bag. We make tea by the gallons around here. We're not we're not screwing around. See, there's a time when you're making tea around here, you either go big or just freaking go back to bed already. Just let me I'll drink your I'll drink your sweet tea and your sun tea. Yeah, I have one of those. Yep. I, I actually have one with a pour spout on the bottom that I Well, this is a real pickle jar. Keep it in the fridge all summer. Very real pickle jars. It's Jane Noel brand pickles. And uh, fill it up with water, throw it in tea bags in there, throw it in the sun oven, or just set it on the just set it on the wall out here in the sun and then let it let it do what it's do what it does. How much we drank too Yeah, we drink we drink like two of them a day, two gallons. Oh, I, I know. I know. I do it too. I do it too. All like I well, frig. I drink tea all day, every day. And I actually had a cup of coffee today, my weekly allotment. I only drink a cup of coffee a week. I have a feeling when I come down there, I'm going to be doing a holy crap, that's a good cup of coffee. Cause I gotta go, holy crap, that really is some good damn coffee. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. Looking, yeah. looking forward to it. So you cooked a ham in that oven behind you today. Yeah. Yep. And how long did it take? <sighs> I don't know. I don't time shit. I just go. I don't wear a watch or anything. I don't even have a watch. It yeah. just, I don't know. It was, uh, the sun was about there when we started, and then when it was done, when I pulled it out, it was about down over there. So About three hours. Nah, maybe two, a little over two. Right. It's usually the sun, like a width of your hand, that's an hour in the sky from where the sun is. With the silhouette, if you go. Intelligence is showing, John. Careful. Yeah. <laughs> Look like me. Yeah. So. Yeah, he. You know what, folks? J John. John. You know, he. He's a good hill folk fella, but don't let him fool you. He's as sharp as a tack, and then some. Yeah. I have that's an advanced degree. I have an advanced degree in hyperbolic topology. So. You know. Say there. what? <laughs> there. I said it. I'm my real job. I'm a theoretical nuclear physicist. There. I, I said wouldn't it. doubt it. You know. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it in a heartbeat. I am a theoretical paleobotanist. I sit around and go, you know what? I'll bet you back in the dinosaur days there were plants. And some of them plants could have been red plants. <laughs> $5,000, please. No. Yeah, I uh, no, I, I, I get by. It's just, you, know, you figure it out as you go. You make mistakes and you learn. And then you... You That's the sign it. of true intelligence. You know that, eh? Yeah, well, it's... Uh, Learning it's, from it's, your mistakes. It is what it is. And plus, you know, 30 years on the back of a motorcycle, I mean, when you're riding a motorcycle, mistakes really hurt bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I have a cousin um, who was a five-time world champion motorcycle hill climber. And... Uh, his sons were hill climbers as well, like motorcycle hill climbers. Mm -hmm. And my cousin Wade, the only thing that saved his life was leather pants. Because he, he, I don't know what happened, but he lost his motorcycle on the 401 highway. And he went right down that highway on the seat of his pants. Yay. That opened him, it almost killed him. Like, because it just, you had no buttocks left, right? Mm -hmm. But um, if it hadn't been for the leather pants, he, he would have died easily. That's, well, that's another four or five layers of skin right there. Before, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, how we used to have a motorcycle and bought chaps and everything, and you know what? That's the only thing left is those chaps. 
And if I could just get him to wear them now and again. <laughs> Minus the pants, of course. You got her. <laughs> it starts like put this, hang on, put the chaps on. <laughs> put on the put on the hat and <laughs> Who's your daddy, baby? I, I, I would just pay good money to see him do that. <laughs> I am hung like a horse fly. What's that? I said, I am hung like a horse fly. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, you got any more questions? Addicted to life and love says, can you guys do some recipes using uh, the dehydrator? Uh, no, not going to do it. Not going to do it. Yeah, you mean, do that. Wait a minute, let's clarify. Using the dehydrator to cook with or using the dehydrate, using dehydrated food? Yeah, that. Well, I, I just did one about the potatoes using the dehydrator, and I will, probably here before too long, I will take those dehydrated potatoes and make a cheese sauce, and we'll do some scalloped potatoes. Uh, yeah. so people, that's one way to use. You know, you show people use dehydrated fruits and making pies and and goodies yeah. and stuff like that. I've done that though. Dehydrated vegetables I mean, and fruits. I use, I use my my uh, apple pie filling because it is more liquidy than store bought. Yeah. I put dehydrated apples in the bottom of the pie plate in the bottom of the shell, and then I pour my sauce. I've made dehydrated tomatoes, and I've made pizza sauce out of the powdered tomatoes. I've made dehydrated uh, beef and chicken bouillon. Just go check our videos out. I mean, we do we do those on a – we do them as they come up, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm always adding them to hydrated stuff to soups and uh, – Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. I'm you not canning carrots. We can actually use it to make yogurt, So, which we might do a video one of these days because, uh, you know, yogurt's good for you. It puts the good bacteria back in your gut. I, use a cool, I make mine with a cooler. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people do that too. I've yeah. seen people use the oven – I've seen people just sit outside when it's hot. Yeah. Um, I'm not dehydrating or I'm not canning carrots this coming year because or peas because Howie doesn't like canned peas and carrots. Go figure because that's the one thing I got lots of. Yeah. But the dehydrated carrots actually worked out a lot better because when you, when you do a soup or a stew, you just throw a handful of them in and you've got, and I mean – Half a cup in a pot of soup or a pot yeah. of stew, and it doesn't it doesn't take much because when they rehydrate, boy, are they good. Well, I mean, I, was, I we did the potatoes to save us some shelf space. I did 15 cans of potatoes. I saw that. And it fit in a little bitty bag, you know. So I saw that. I want to get one of those sorbent system sealers too. That was really yeah, awesome. That was here. I saved up for a while to get that thing last. So I got it last year, and uh, it's really. I mean, you can use, and you literally use any kind of bag. I mean, we've done all kind of bags. Maybe I do a video on that because we'll be doing, you know, you can save, like, any kind of bag, chip bags. You know, That's you what you were saying. Bag. I think you yeah. should show what you mean when you do the Dorito bags right. with your jerky. Yeah. I'll do it. We'll, we'll save up some chip bags, and uh, we'll get the, the, the old snorkel bag out and do some stuff and seal them up in there. I mean, that's, I mean, if you eat chips, that's a good way to say, that's a good way to reduce, reuse, recycle, repurpose, you yeah. know? Because they're, they're, just, they're just Mylar bags. They're Mylar yeah. bags that have been painted with the logos, so. Yeah. Exactly. So we got about eight minutes left, folks. Any more questions? Did we answer that question? Well, you asked him whether... Uh what what he was talking about, and he says both. Yeah, so both. Well, I hope we answered the both. He wanted to know cooking and using dehydrator stuff afterwards. And, uh, uh, the only thing I've ever made in my dehydrator that is like to ready to eat is granola, and I do. I I've done it in the oven, and I've done it in the dehydrator. So I have two videos on that. I think I'm gonna start redoing some of my old videos just because they're crap. I uh, don't think we really, we really. I mean, we use our other than dehydrating stuff is uh, sometimes if, you know, like in the wintertime we use the fruit bread. Get the bread to rise. Well, I tell you, if, if my dehydrator ever breaks down or, or if the trays ever die or anything like that, I, I think I might turn it into an incubator. Yeah. That would be kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. I have a video somewhere. I haven't uploaded it yet that I uh, I was started to build a incubator, and then I realized my friend Nat had one, and she sent it home to me with Howie in the bag and all that stuff. But in the meantime, I had 
wired up a. I had taken an old computer that we that died, and I had wired up a computer fan, and I'm going to put that in my my new incubator for next year because it doesn't have a fan. So I think I'll be that'll be a video before long too. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty creative. Well, I mean, I built an incubator before, and it works. I just can't find it. I think Howie went on a cleaning binge and threw it away. <laughs> but, I mean, they're not that – it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of – it's hard to keep your temperature level because you don't have a thermostat, you know? Well, so, you probably put a little thermostat in there, couldn't you? Probably. I a little – I mean, all kinds of stuff now for, like, solar systems and stuff, or your, like, battery box, a little – thermometers and little thermostats and stuff. You can probably just get one of them and put that right in your incubator and then it'll kick on as it needs it. Hmm. Well, since Nat's going to want her incubator back, I just might have to make a second one. Um, just, you know, the first one I was throwing together in a panic because, you know, Howie phoned from work and said, buddy at work just brought me seven fertile duck eggs. And I said, um... But the chicken eggs are in the incubator, and they're due to hatch in two weeks, so I ain't messing with that. Well, we'll figure something out. You mean I'll figure something out. I started to build an incubator, right? Put it on the list. Oh, my God, that's so funny. <laughs> Howie, can you do this? Put it on the list. He actually got quite a bit. He's got, he's got, you know, that guy never stops, eh? He's just, you know, he work, work, work. And when he does stop, he has two speeds. Stop and go. Me too. And when he stops... He's on the, if he's not in bed, but if he stops for a day, he's on the couch for an entire day, and then he can't figure out why he doesn't feel good. Yeah. I either get up and get going, or I get up and don't do nothing. Don't have right. very many of them days when I'm feeling bad or whatever. Uh-oh, my camera's missing. A lot of times, I, I'm the same way. I got two speeds. I'm either going or I'm stationary and not planning on going and... Good luck trying to make me go. <laughs> Poor Howie. Poor Howie. I get up at 4.30. I make him breakfast. I make him lunch. I get him out the door. I check my uploads or whatever it is. And I go back to bed for a couple hours because I don't actually get to sleep until about midnight. Right? And so he calls me at break time, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning, and I'm still in bed. And he goes, what are you doing still in bed? It's like, um, well, let's see. I laid down. I, I got up at 4.30. Well, so did I. No, Howie, you got up at 5.30. Come on. <laughs> but, I mean, because I only get like four hours sleep in, at night, when he goes back to work, I go back to bed for three hours. So to most people, it looks like I'm sleeping in the middle of the day, which I kind of am, but I'm actually only getting seven hours of sleep in a 24-hour period, which isn't bad. But you take away my – let's just put it this way. You will never take nap time from me. <laughs> Gotta have my nap. Or yeah, I'll what I look at it is, is we're adults, and by golly, if I'm gonna lay down and sleep all damn day long, good luck to you trying to get me out of bed. Because if I make once I make up my mind that I'm not getting up, I ain't getting up. Yeah. And I will be very, very upset if I'm forced to get up when I'm not ready. I, uh, I have to get up anyway because, you know, we got to get up and do stuff. We got stuff I, to know, do. I know. I got up this morning at 7 o'clock. I slept in, and I made him toasted uh, cheese and hemp harp sandwiches and a cup of tea, and I took it to, into him in bed. And I put the dogs out, and then I fed the dogs. And I made myself my cup of tea and my sandwich, and I crawled back into bed with my book. That's my morning routine. I'm a bit OCD, too, eh? And you almost have to be when you're an insomniac. So anyway, he's sitting up. He's like, "Well, I got to get up now." I was like, "Why? I just brought you breakfast in bed." No, I got to get up now. I'm awake, right? Forget it. Just forget it. Then he says, "He says, what's for breakfast at like 11:30?" I said, "I gave you breakfast." Anyway, he's lucky. It's 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 Sunday, and I cooked three meals for him today. He's lucky if he gets one meal cooked a day on the weekend. I always make sure there's lots of bread. Minnie, yeah. shut your gob. Sandwiches. Sandwiches yeah. and leftovers. Huh? Sandwiches and leftovers. Yeah, well, that's life. Yeah. Anyway, it is time to go, honey. 
My show starts in two minutes. Sounds good. So I hope, uh, you know, thanks. For, I know it's Easter Sunday, but, I mean, we didn't do it last week, and it was nice to just sit and shoot the breeze with my little brother. Yeah, it is. It's always nice. Love you, too. Love you, Mary. Love you, too. Yeah. Love you, bye. Uh, she doesn't know me yet, but she will. She won't be able to help herself but love me. <laughs> love me. Yeah. Anyway. This is the Ms. Volvi from our Half Acre Homestead and my Jay little brother. Jay No Zero from the Jay No Zero. From the hill. Thing. <laughs> from the hill. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you all next week, folks. You take care, okay? Good night. Uh-oh.